In our nerdy bike world where many products are similar, the new Zwift Hub 1 Smart Trainer is actually fairly unique. What sets this Smart Trainer apart is that it works with virtually any bike from seven speeds to 12 speeds without having to mess with the cassette. That's this often greasy guy. Because as the name implies, there's just one cog. Once you set the width to match your bike with these handy cards that come with it, drop your bike on, you align the chain with that cog, and poof, you are off to the virtual races. From there, Zwift automatically controls the resistance to mimic the hills of a virtual riding landscape or the prescribed wattage of a set workout. It also comes with this Bluetooth two-button remote called Click, which can adjust the virtual gears from 1 to 18 or the difficulty of the workout. Also, it comes with a year's subscription to Zwift worth 150 bucks. To assemble and adjust the thing, all you need is this one tool four bolts to put it together, and then one 14 mil wrench if you need to change it from a quick release to a through axle bike. All in all, it's a pretty compelling pitch. In this video, I'll tell you all the details on this new Zwift Hub 1, share my experiences riding it, tell you how it compares to the two dozen or so other trainers I've tested, talk about smart trainers versus dumb trainers, wheel on versus direct drive trainers, and explain what the heck Zwift is. Please take a second to subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notified whenever I publish a new video. Now let's dig into the new Zwift Hub 1. Feel free to use the navigation chapters to jump around. First, let's talk about Zwift. It fully revolutionized the indoor training space in 2016 when it launched. It was not the first, probably won't be the last, but it is now the 800 pound gorilla. What sets Zwift apart is not just the interaction between the game and the trainer for both you know, workouts and for mimicking riding conditions, but the interactions with other riders. That for me is the secret sauce. When you're doing races, you can be competing with people literally around the globe. You can ride with people in group rides that are launching every seemingly 10 minutes. And there are oodles of workouts to do. The Spanish operation Be Cool was first to the market with this interactive racing platform. Wahoo had until very recently something called RGT, which had races where you can compete virtually with people around the world. There's also a thing called MyWoosh, which is quite similar. For workouts, you know, Trainer Road has you know long been the go-to for many folks for delivering workouts and nothing but workouts. There's also things that or you know, indoor tourism as of, of a sort like Ruby or Full Gas, where your pedaling controls the video programming where you just get to see different places around the world. Zwift does not deliver that virtual tourism. It's all an imaginary world where your power that you put into a trainer drives your avatar as it interacts with this virtual world and other actual riders scattered around the globe. You don't have to ride Zwift with a smart trainer. You can do it on rollers or a dumb trainer, but the smart trainer really brings the experience to life in that when you go up a hill, it gets harder. When you go down a hill, it's easier. And when you're doing workouts, you can set it in so-called erg mode uh, to deliver the exact amount of resistance that the game or the software is prescribing. When the weather's nice, I am riding outside, but in wintertime, I'm all about Zwift. It's one of the few software apps that I pay for. I pay for Shaba, I pay for Epic Ride Weather, and I pay for Zwift for what that's worth. To do Zwift, you need a trainer, you need a computer, and then you need a decent internet connection. There are different types of trainers. A smart trainer is smarter than a dumb trainer, the traditional trainer, where it was just resistance that you could ramp up either by pedaling harder, by shifting into a harder gear, or some had you know, mechanical levers to ramp up the resistance. There was no interaction at all. The positive side to a dumb trainer is that they're cheap. What the smart trainer brings to the table is the interaction of the game controlling resistance and what you're doing on the trainer controlling your game, whether that's powering your avatar or walking through a workout. 
For smart trainers, there's two main types, wheel on and direct drive. Wheel on, as the name implies, you keep your rear wheel on and put the whole thing into a trainer and then adjust the resistance unit up so that the roller touches the rear tire. That is definitely the cheaper option. The better option is direct drive where you take your wheel off and put your drivetrain onto the trainer. That gives you a few benefits. One, the power accuracy is far superior. That's another thing that smart trainers do is they're effectively a power meter. Uh, the stability is much better and just the convenience factor of there's just less faffing around to get the thing set up every time you put the bike on and take it off. With a wheel on smart trainer, uh, in addition to the setup, you have to do a warm up period and then a calibration to make sure that the power meter is reading closely. And even then there's so many variables with the tire and air pressure and such that you're never gonna get the same level of power meter accuracy as you do with a direct drive. So smart trainers, better than dumb trainers. Direct drive, better than wheel on. All this, of course, comes at a cost, and Zwift shook up the market last year when it launched the Zwift Hub at a cost of $499. That was undercutting the competition by hundreds of dollars. Most direct drive smart trainers are at least $800, if not $1,000, $1,200, and up. So the Zwift Hub, when it launched at $499, definitely made waves. The original Zwift Hub is now $599, as is this guy. They both come with that year of Zwift subscription, valued at 150 bucks. Definitely the most inexpensive direct drive smart trainer for sure. Now, in addition to that great price, Zwift is touting the convenience option of this one design. Instead of you know, wrestling with various cassettes and drivers to get onto the trainer and make sure those match your bike, with this guy, you've just got this single car option where it's a matter of setting the width of the bike and then dropping your chain in there. This incidentally you can buy with a click for $55 if you already have one of these and you want to make that adaptation. Now let's talk about how you set this thing up initially. Out of the box, very few parts. You've got the main trainer, two legs, four bolts, <laughs> and a wrench. Pretty straightforward to put the legs on. They're color coded as to which goes where and in what direction. From there, next step is to figure out the width of your dropouts. You take your rear wheel off, and then if you've got a quick release bike, you use the quick release card and you slide this into the dropouts to see whether that's 130 millimeter spacing or 135 millimeter spacing. And then the card is handily marked so you can see if it's 130, then you use the adapter with the black pointed out. If it's 135, use it with the pink pointed out. It's a pretty simple system to what can be honestly a pretty infuriating uh, process if you're trying to figure out compatibility and you're not doing this uh, on the regular. Now, if you've got a through axle bike, meaning instead of this operation, you've got something that uh, goes all the way through and bolts the wheel on, use the through axle card. And there, you know, similarly, you slot it in here with the rear wheel off to see if it's 142 or 148. And then you take the adapter and pop it in here as the color code suggests. The Zwift Hub 1 comes set up for a quick release. So if you're putting on through axle, you need to remove this bolt, take it off, put on your through axle adapter, and then you're good to go. At first blush, that may sound a little bit complicated, but compared to the typical complexity when you're trying to figure out not just how many speeds, but which driver and quick release or through axle, this is a greatly simplified version. Once you've got your axle configuration measured and the appropriate adapter put in in the correct direction, pop on the bike, wrap your chain around the cog the way you would a rear wheel, secure the bike in place, and then align the chain with your shifter so that it is running right on top of the cog. Then you turn on the game of Zwift and it will search for your smart trainer and power meter source. It, at least in my experience, found it easily. And then it also looks for uh, your shifter 
options. This little Bluetooth click shift button can be mounted anywhere on your bike with two rubber bands and it gives you 18 gear options. The gear you're in is shown on screen. And when you press the button, you feel that change uh, in the Zwift Hub 1 immediately. Another option for shifting is the Zwift Play. These controllers, video game-like controllers, or in fact, video game controllers, this is a video game, clamp onto your handlebars, just easy to use rubber clamps, and then you can do a few more things with this. You can certainly shift gears with them. You can steer right and left, uh, and then you've got some menu buttons so you don't have to use your computer to you know, pick a workout, select an event, and change your bike gear selection, etc. I tested these earlier for a quick minute uh, locally here when they came out in the summer. Since it was summertime, I couldn't really care. <laughs> now I'm uh, definitely more interested in these things and the functionality is nice and easy and the, probably one of the biggest benefits is not having to be sweating all over your computer. And for those of you who like participating in Zwift races, being able to hit power-ups with your hands still on the bike is instead of like reaching over to slap your computer or press the little button on your phone is definitely a superior option. In any event, these guys are 99 bucks and can be used at the same time as the Zwift Click. Just another option for shifting. So what is this like to ride? The key thing is it matches the experience of what's going on visually in the game. When you go up a hill, this makes it harder. When you start going down, it makes it easier. And then when you select workouts, this can do the driving for you. You can set it on erg mode or resistance mode if you don't like it doing everything for you. You can make that change, but a lot of folks like having it do the driving. Shifting into an easier gear makes it easier. Shifting into a harder gear makes it harder. It's pretty darn simple. A potential downside, or at least like a old dog new tricks thing, is that it's a little strange to be sitting on a bike where you're accustomed to shifting with the shifters to those shifters not being what changes the experience, but only being able to use the button. So a few times I caught myself going to shift and all that does is take this out of alignment. So that's not necessarily a negative thing, but it's definitely a change of behavior. This is very aggressive in price and it's pretty easy to use. It is not a high-end model. There are features missing here that you might be familiar with on the top end models. For instance, it's a fixed unit. You can't fold it down for storage. The feet are fixed. You can't you know, fine tune adjust if you have like say an uneven garage floor. I found the stability to be just fine, but if there's a place with a little bit of wobble to it, I just had to move this around until it was on flat ground. It's not the quietest unit in the world. It's not super loud, but it's probably, you know, one and a half to two times louder than a Wahoo Kicker, which is one of the quieter units on the marketplace. But again, that's $1,200 to $1,300. This is 600 bucks. For power accuracy, I don't know for sure. I've just ridden this a couple times. I tested it against a trusty stages, left arm meter, and it was they were in ballpark with each other. I'll be doing a lot more power testing and we'll do a full review later down the road, but it seems like to me, if you're gonna be getting this as your first ever trainer, it's good enough. <laughs> for the money, it's an excellent deal. For convenience, it's a pretty sweet thing of being able to pop on one bike with a relative minimum of mechanical work. It's also a good solution if you're in a household with multiple bikes. Some people have a, you know, 10 speed, some people have 12 speed, some people are quick race, some people are through axle. This uh, is a solution that could work relatively well for multiple bikes in one house. The 18 gears I found to be plenty of range. I also appreciated being able to adjust the difficulty of workouts on the fly. The downside is that you're kind of locked into Zwift and not being able to use the full functionality of other platforms, at least initially. So for instance, I tested it with Trainer Road and the interactivity works both ways, but you can't shift your bike, right? So to make it easier or harder, that's just a matter of controlling the, the game's resistance, you know, or 
just pedaling more quickly. It can be kind of counterintuitive to folks getting on smart trainers for the first time that if it's feeling really hard, you just need to pedal more quickly because wattage equals torque times your cadence. So if you're pedaling slowly, there's gonna be a lot more torque. If you're pedaling quickly, the torque or the resistance is gonna be a little bit lower. So it can work with other platforms, but it's certainly designed to work best with Zwift. Even within Zwift, again, it's kind of strange not to be able to shift with your shifters. I like the, the play options because that's close to the shifters. Um, not a big deal, but you know, certainly a notable difference from other types of smart trainers and certainly from the experience of riding outside. In conclusion, this seems like a pretty good option for folks looking to get into a smart trainer to ride Zwift for the first time. Certainly for folks who are a little unsure about the technical details, whether that's their mechanical prowess or just, you know, whether they're gonna upgrade from an 11-speed bike to a 12-speed bike. That with this Zwift Hub 1, it works with most bikes from seven to 12 speeds. It doesn't work with campy 13 speeds. So that's, you know, a notable outlier. It's pretty easy to set up initially and you don't have to mess with the cassettes. There's no danger of it you know, chopping out the legs of the high-end smart trainers out there like a Tax Neo 2T or the Wahoo Kicker. But again, that's not the market that Zwift is going after with this particular model. I'll be doing more testing as the weather grows colder and I'll report back in a few months with a full review. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. I thank you for subscribing and clicking that bell so you get notified of my videos whenever they pop up. And whether you're riding inside or outside, enjoy that ride.